and welcome to episode 14 of the Renet podcast with me, Roz. Uh, I'm Emily. Yes. You can find me on lots of places as uh, LP McDork. You can find me on Ravelry as Rosaroo and on Instagram as Rosarooney. We are recording a podcast. Yes. Two weeks after we last recorded, but hopefully this podcast will be up only one week after the last podcast. Yeah. Because of technical issues. Mainly the iCloud is stupid and never lets me do anything. Well, basically. the iCloud, the computer, something. The podcast wouldn't download from the iPad to the computer to allow me to edit it. So I ended up sitting there staring at the computer <laughs> in hopes that that would work. And it did. So, you know, maybe technology is, you know, more or less weird than we thought. Depending on what you thought. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to say that we, while we have two weeks worth of stuff, it has, it's not been all, you know, accomplished in one week. So don't feel like we're super achieving. Also, I don't feel like we have achieved a huge amount. Well, I'm well, a bit. Meh. Anyway, so. You starting? With works in progress? Yeah. Sure. Let's go for it. I am currently working on a jumper. This is what it looks like so far. It is... Uh, Basically, the flax jumper from Tin Can Knits, but I'm not doing the garter stitch on the sleeve because uh, two reasons. One, I don't have to concentrate so much if I'm not doing a load of garter stitch. And two, Em's got a version of this jumper in grey. I do. And I don't want us to look like jumper twinsies. Apparently. Well, because they're both uh, solid colours. Yeah. I think they would look a bit funny. Okay. Uh, we both wore them out at the same time. Whereas, uh, not that I'm thinking this is going to be a hugely, like, I'm thinking it's going to be like a sort of very around the house slash for a dog walk kind of jumper. But yeah, this is out of some uh, Allen yarn that I bought on Monday, it's now Sunday, at Aldi. It's called Aran Yarn <laughs> in the colour brown. It is... 400 grams and 800 meters this is about 200 grams so the ball band is quite loose uh but i got for it says 3.99 a ball i did not pay 3.99 for this ball i paid 1.99 for each of the two balls i got so it's going to be like a four pound jumper when it's finished which is amazingly cheap and you know the only other way you could make a jumper so cheap is if you got given some yarn or if you like bought some fleece very cheaply and then you had to process all that fleece and I haven't had to process any of it I guess so this is going to be very convenient it is 80% acrylic 20% wool um, this is my second ball but uh, the other ball is also about half finished so I'm about halfway through the yarn um, I'm about halfway down the knitting of the this length and I've just started well just restarted the first sleeve and now I just dropped a load of stitches because I knit the sleeve yesterday and didn't read the pattern properly and didn't read how soon I was supposed to start the decreases for the sleeve and so I started them late and then started I maybe I'll insert a photo if I could just take a photo before I rip back the sleeve and I had sort of a, quite a slope on the sleeve and it looked a bit silly So I'm re-knitting this to have more of a gradual slope instead of like a, a ramp of sleeve. But this is, this is kind of a theme of my knitting this past couple of weeks is sleeves are letting me down. Okay. I'm being let down in the sleeve. So this is, oh, it's being knit on five millimetre needles as the pattern calls for, which is why it's progressing pretty damn quickly. Because I've, yeah, this has been almost seven days of knitting and I've, if I hadn't been, you know, let down by my poor sleeving or poor pattern reading skills, I'd be further along. But this is my uh, casual tunic from Knitwear Love by Amy Herzog. I've mattress stitched in my first sleeve. And up here, it's, it's too narrow. And yeah. so it, it pulls like this and it looks really awful when I wear it. So I've got a D mattress stitch this whole sleeve, then pull it back to 
like here and then re-knit this top bit so that there's more space in here um, and on the second sleeve which I'm knitting well I, I've started knitting it and I've stopped knitting it now I've realized I've got to redo re this sleeve because it's depressing so I'm just sort of putting that to one side and I'll pick it back up again once I finish the jumper successfully and I'm not you know sad about sleeves <laughs> um, that can be that can be our podcast episode title sad about sleeves yeah having a sleeve sadness I'm getting over this sleeve sadness because it's going pretty quickly but the other I'm picking mattress stitch is going to be a real pain mm. so I don't yeah I don't know. If anyone would like to come over and do that for me, <laughs> I would be very grateful. But I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm going to have to get around to doing it. My other works in progress I showed last week on the podcast, they're still not finished because I have been knitting the jumper mostly. Um, this is the sock. It's still the first sock of two. It's still not finished. But it's uh, out of style craft. <laughs> Is it head over heels? I did have the blue band and oh yeah there it is. It is Stylecraft head over heels in the colour Ingleborough and I was looking it up online last weekend for the podcast show notes. All the colours in the Stylecraft head over heels are called, are, are named after mountains. So I knit some, oh. yeah, I didn't know Ingleborough was a mountain. But I knit some out of the Kilimanjaro colourway. Uh, Maybe yeah. at the beginning of the podcast, the first one of the first episodes. Yeah. And the contrast heel and toe is out of a uh, mini skein of West Yorkshire spinners that I got from Alternate Universe in the colour Sour Apple. Mm. Yeah, which is really nice. I think it's a very good name for this colour. It does yeah. look like a, a sour apple sweet. It does. And you know, thinking about it, it makes my mouth water slightly. So that's it's progressed a bit from last week. No. Over the last week it's not progressed at all, but the week before it progressed a bit. And similarly with my little colour work mitten. I finished the ribbing. This is out of the little grey sheep. Um, oh, you're colour. using that stitch marker I got you for Christmas. Yes, my Christmas stitch marker. So this is just twisted rib, one by one. And it, it, this brown is called Bullrush. And this is Columbine, and it's the Hampshire yarn, Hampshire sheep something. I forget what specific brand of uh, little grey sheep. It's called the little grey sheep, but it's the the British Hampshire yarn. Okay, mini skein. So it's it's basically um, sock or four ply thickness, but it is actually two plies of. I think it's woolen spun anyway this is yeah i'm going to be doing color work with woolen spun so it's going to be kind of fluffy yeah it's going to have more of a sort of watercolor <coughs> effect rather than like a really crisp uh effect look when it's finished and probably when i'm knitting it as well but that is all my works in progress for this week cool um i've only got a couple First one is this one that I'm currently knitting, and this I'm keeping this in the lovely bag that Ros made for me um, because it's got two colours. You can I can fold it down and then you can see. And it's got two colours in there. One on that side. That's my contrast heel cup toe, and then that's what I'm knitting it out of. So this is a sock. See, it's got a heel and a cup. It's got a heel everything. and everything. Uh, I can say this is a birthday present for my dad because my dad will not watch this, and so will not know. Um, yeah, it's his birthday next week. So this is going to be a birthday present for him. So um, on the first one, I've done the um, the cuff and the heel in the contrast. I'm working on the foot. Uh, this is West Yorkshire Spinner Signature 4-ply. I think, did you say it was their colour, Christmas colourway from a couple of years ago? It's called Holly something or other. Yeah, I think it's Holly Berry. Yeah, it's not on the band. Yeah, I, I don't think. understand how they can have names but not put the names on the board. No. Like, they've got secret names. Uh, so, yeah. So that's from, that's that, and so I just wanted to do a nice, simple sock. I will do another one. He does have two feet, he yeah. can have two socks. 
but this is the first one. So I've been working on that pretty constantly because it's his birthday at the end of next week. So I need to get done. You've only cast that on, I think, Wednesday this week. Something so. like that, yeah. So yeah. it'll get done. It's got. I'm doing a slip stitch here. It's just a vanilla sock, um, as are most of my socks I do. And then it's just got a nice slip stitch here to give it a little bit of texture. Um, yeah, my usual. 72 stitches on a 2mm needle seems to work quite well um, for my socks. So there it is. It's nice. I like the colours. It's quite, mm. you know rustic masculine sure Gender uh, so that's the first one the second one i've been putting a lot more work on my uh my jumper oh no have i actually finished that row i haven't what i'm going to do is finish this row i'll talk about have i just started oh i've just started that row okay yeah. let's not do that then so this is my eye if i put it round no it's about there there we go that way so this is the front, you can't see it. Do you know what I might do? I might just unpick the stitches while I talk about it and then I can mm -hmm. hold it up. Um, this is also from Knitwear Love, isn't yeah. it? Which is the Amy Herzog book. I'm doing the classic, I think. Classic pullover? Classic jumper, classic, classic jumper. pullover. Oh, yeah, right. something like that. Um, I've done the back already. I finished that a while ago. Um, and so I'm doing the front which has got a texture pattern which I will show you in two seconds once I've unpicked these stitches which I'm now dropping everywhere so maybe this is a bad idea. Yeah. Okay well it's just gonna have to stay like that then. Right. Do you want to see what the yarn is? Yeah I will do in a sec. Um, so I'm just doing the front so that was that's one side of the front and then that's the other side of the front and just out so I've done the decrease for the for the arms. I'm kind of worried it's going to be quite big and quite sloppy because it's supposed to be quite fitted but this I don't think this is going to be fitted. I think it's going to be quite big but never mind. It's got to go it's not just your front, it's got to go all the way around. No, I know, it's got to go to here, but there's loads yeah. of extra space Is at there? the front. Yeah. Look, if I put this around to the other side here, like that, there's still quite a lot of baggy. I don't think it's that baggy. No? No. And the back's quite baggy as well. Mm. So, we'll see. Anyway. So this is the front, it's knitting pieces and sewn together. So I've done, I did the back a while ago and I've shown it before, but you can see there's a, like a pattern on the front. The pattern is, um, there are lots of mistakes in it, but you can't really tell, so it's fine. I don't really care. Um, yeah, the pattern's a bit squonky in places, but I'm not massively bothered. I quite like the way it looks. Squonky, that's a new word. Squonky. So that's that. I'm hoping to finish that fairly soon, because um, once I've done the front, I just need to do the sleeves, although I will stitch it together. This is out of Stylecraft, which is acrylic, which is good, because it means I have to block it. Um, It'll be machine washable. Stylecraft special double knit which is the same as the grey jumper that I've done. My flax jumper is also out of Stylecraft uh, and that was re that's really good and it's comfy and it wears well so da -da. so I'm hoping to have that finished pretty soon and that is all I've got for well, my works in progress. Well I mean I have other works in progress but I've not done anything on them. I've still yeah. got my um my hat, what's it called? The sock head hat mm. in the grey, um, but that just sits in my work bag. I do that at work when I've got like a bit of time, so that gets done slowly, but surely it'll be finished at some point, I'm sure. Um, yeah, but the socks and the jumper are the two main things that I've been working on the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. We don't have any finished objects. No, we're both, you know, disappointed uh, in that regard. To be fair, we did finish a lot last time, so, you know. Yeah, well... Last time was covering a long time. It was covering like three or four weeks, wasn't it? Yeah. So, and it's Christmas. Do you want to do some spinning then? Talk about your spinning? Yeah, I've been Go spinning. I've finished some spinning. I finished this last time, but I've now skeined it and washed it and dried it. So it is now. Oh. Is it slightly damp? No, it's just me imagining things. Is it cold? Yeah, it's a little bit chilly. This is my Hilltop Cloud. Time Travellers Club from August, which was chrome yellow. It was merino and I've forgotten what the other thing was. Maybe Ooh. soy silk and tougher silk, I think. It was no mostly way. merino. It's very, very soft. I split it into chunks and long draw, lo spun it long draw from the fold. It is a two-ply. It's... Uh, a bit thick and thin in places, but um, look, if you look at this bit up here, 
this is all quite consistent. I'm just, you know, don't look at the mad floofy bits. <laughs> and this came out to be about 197 metres. Once it had been uh, bathed, I think I've not brought my little notebook with my turn tally in, so I'm just guessing based on what numbers I think I wrote down. It's somewhere between like 180 and 210 or something. But yeah, it's sort of... Well, some bits are really quite fine and some bits are not, but it's more of a sort of double knit Aran type thickness overall. But yeah, that is that is long draw and, I'm, and two ply. I'm not hugely consistent with my long draw yet. And then this is Hilltop Cloud Time Travelers Club from December, which is mm. also long drawn. Graphite. Yeah, this is graphite. This I long I spun the same way, but I split it into three. It's the past tense of long draw, long drew. I don't know. <laughs> I spun it long draw. It was you long. You long drew it. I yeah. I don't know. But I, this is a three ply, so it looks more consistent because three ply is a bit magic that way. It sort of evens everything out and it's roughly, I think it's quite even, but it's only about 81 metres because I spun it fairly chunky. Um, it, this spun up so quickly. I think I did all the spinning in an evening because I was just I was having fun I did like the first one first third and because it was really floofy and open and it just spun up so quickly that I just kept going because I was liking it so much so Spinning. this is uh, I think 50% Corydale something else Swaledale and a bit of linen mm. so it's a bit it's not it's not hugely unsoft but it's not as soft as the mostly merino one I just showed you I think the colours look quite nice together. They do. And if anyone knows of a pattern that calls for not very much of a chunky and a, a worsted-ish yarn, I think maybe a cowl of some yeah. kind would be nice. I don't know. I think they look really good together. They do. Are they both soft enough for a cowl? Um, well, this is definitely soft enough. Yellow. Yeah. And this... Yeah, I've just, just tested it. I've just tested it and testing. it's fine. Excellent. Yeah, which is surprising because I didn't think it would be this soft with the swale bale and the linen, but it is. Yeah. So yeah, that is the spinning I have finished. And then this is the spinning I'm currently, well, I'm not currently doing it. I'm currently knitting. Oh, it's very fine. This is my super fine merino, which I'm spinning. As finely oh, as fine. I can. It's like dental floss. Yeah. I'm spinning. I split it into three. So I'm hoping to do a three ply. A lace weight. Um, I'm thinking it's probably going to finish up to be about uh, sock weight, mm -hmm. four ply. So it's going to be a three ply, but it's going to yeah. be like the thickness of a sock weight. I think. I hope. Cool. We'll see when it's finished. But I'm a little bit into the second third. And I've kind of stopped spinning it at the moment because I'm also spinning some Gotland, which I have here a sample of, which is, this is a chain ply of some Gotland, which is very, very fine. And I knit a tiny sample of it and it was too, too fine and a bit too tightly spun, I think. So I'm spinning it a little bit more thickly and a little bit, with a little bit less twist. And we'll see what happens. I've got about 580, 570 grams of Gotland that I won in the raffle at Spinning Girl a while ago. So I'm going to spin it up and hopefully knit a jumper of some kind out of it. But if I haven't got enough of the Gotland, I will stripe in possibly some BFL. Because BFL is also a long staple lustrous wool which is what Gotland is. Gotland is from Gotlandshire. Uh Sweden or a Scandinavia I think it's from a Scandinavian I think it's like Shetland in that the island is called Gotland. It's not from Gotlandshire. No, it's from like an island called Gotland. Okay. I think. Uh which is in Scandinavia. And the sheep from that island are called Gotland sheep. Mm -hmm. And 
BFL is a British long, longer stapled lustrous wool. So it should. I always think blue face lustre sounds like a cheese. Yeah, I'm not spinning a cheese. <laughs> you cannot eat my jumper when it's finished. So yeah, it's kind of fuzzy. Um, but it's also very, very fine, which is, is good if I wanted a, a lace weight, but I don't want 600 metres of grey lace weight. Fuzzy lace weight. It's, it's very soft, it's very lovely, but we'll see. Oh, it is, isn't it? Very it nice. Is. Yeah. Pretty strong, because it's three ply and spun fairly tight. Well, not, not that tight, but tighter than I would like for... For a jumper yarn. Is that what it's going to be for? Well, not this bit. Well, no. This was my knit no, a very tiny yeah. jumper. This was my sample yeah. that I've, I've now decided I don't like. And I'm now, based on this sample, I'm spinning the whole lot differently. So it may turn out to be a slight disaster. Who knows? But I'm going to, I'm just going to spin it and then it will be spun. And there's always things you can do with yarn. That is, that is, I feel that is true. The rule of yarn. Yeah. So, yeah, that is... That's your spinning? That's all my spinning! Cool, I have one thing to show for spinning. Oh, right. it's an impressive thing. Oh, it is, yeah. So, this lovely floofy load of floofness is um, the purple stuff that... I think I showed some of the braid last time. Yeah. I don't think... I don't think I'd started spinning the, uh, the merino and the silk. I think I was still spinning the bamboo. Anyway, so this is a two-ply. It's purple. Mm. In case you can't tell. Um, and the purple, the main purple bit is the bamboo from Alternate Universe. And then there is also uh, merino and silk um, that was mostly purple, but it had like bits of green and stuff in it. Just about three little bits of colours and stuff. So, uh, yep, yeah, they are, it's a two-ply. It's going to be a shawl for uh, a friend. But I'm now going to save this until um, Stash Dash. I'm going to knit it during Stash Dash no. uh, for a whole load of Stash Dash points. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it's not something that needs to be done straight away. It's, there is about 780 metres. <gasps> wow. That's pretty long. That's why it took four blimmin' ever to ply. That's why it yeah. took me a day <laughs> to ply it. That's why. And you can't even finish the plying. That was just how much you could fit on that the That was bobbin. just how much. There's a little bit left on yeah. those things just yeah. behind me. Not a huge amount. Okay. Just a little a little squidge. I might ply them and like make something tiny out of it. But yeah. So there's a, that's a lot of yarn. Um, it is a bit thick, thick and thin, but it's okay, I think. I mean, it's kind of floofy, but it's going to be a shawl. So a bit of floofiness is all right. It's not like I'm making it into socks or something. Um, a bit of floofiness is alright in your socks. Yeah, but it would wear. Yeah, well, it's a two ply. Um, I wouldn't exactly. make socks out of a two ply. No. Uh, so that's what it is. So yeah, alternate universe and Beth Connor's textiles was the other, the other one. But I'm better chuffed with it. I don't think I've done a two ply, like a, a significant amount of two ply. I did. I've got some two ply left over from the yellow stuff that I spun during Ford fleece that I'm knitting the socks out of. I do have a small skein of two ply from that after one of my colours run out. Um, but yeah, a lot of purple, a lot of purple uh, yarn that's going to be a shawl. I could undo it and show its floofiness. It's very floofy. Yeah. It's good. It's very, very, very soft and lovely. Fluffy. It's very fluffy and, and lovely. It's quite, you know, airy. There's a lot of air in it, I think. And it feels quite poofy. So, I'll do the shawl test. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good for sure. <laughs> it's nice and soft. Well, it's. So I need yeah. to find a pattern. Very soft it. fibers. Yeah, I need to find a pattern for it. Uh, but as I say, that's not something I'm going to be doing in the immediate future. That will be done during the summer, during stash dash. Is it May stash dash starts? It or is, because it, it starts the uh, the American school, when the American schools stop, which is May. Yeah. Yeah. This is why Tour de Fleece is going to be a pain in the ass for me this year. Because I'm going to be at school. <laughs> Although, actually, no, that's not true because it starts in July this year. I checked. Yeah. So I'll only be at school for a little bit. Whereas I'm sure it started in June last year. Is it normally in June? I think. I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't know. But yeah, because because uh, it starts when uh, the Knit Girls, when Laura goes on holiday for her school and they yeah. finish in like May and go back in August. Yeah. So. Um, You'll be on school holidays for a lot of that. I'll be on school holidays for a lot of it, but not at the beginning. I will be at school. 
do what we did last year and save up bits of stuff that's almost finished for weeks yes. and weeks, and weeks. Yeah, 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 like the old pair of socks and yeah. stuff like that. Yes, well, I could start knitting that before then, couldn't I? Just finish it during the first day. Yeah. Oh, I could do. I might do that. I'll have a think. I'll see what else I've got to do. I have so much random stuff that I want to get done. I have to. I've got another thing that I have to knit in the next sort of month or so. I've got, you know, other bits and pieces to do. So we shall see. That's my only bit of spinning. Um, I have spun a tiny bit of the uh, of a bat, but it's not much, and it's not wonderfully spun. So um, it goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Weather. <laughs> Other than that, I think that's it for my spinning. Yeah. Do you want to start off with Stash and Hunt? Hmm? Want me to do mine? Yeah, because you've got lots. Okay, of them. Okay. I've well, I've got two. Okay. <laughs> so I am planning a new project, which is the Find Your Fade shawl, which is the Hohi Loki Kelly uh, fingering weight shawl knit in singles. And it requires, I think, about six or seven different colours, different skeins in different sizes. So I'm starting to collect some singles that I can use for this. So I've got two of those. This one is lovely. So this one I got from the yarn shop that is just over the road from me, Wallstop. And it is that Manos del Uruguay Fino in the colour Bramble. Bramble? Bramble. Mm. And it is 30% uh, silk, 70% merino. Yeah, it's a single and it's very, very soft and lovely and sort of quite fluffy. Um, and that's, so that's 50 grams, which we'll do for one of the colours. It's nice, it's got like a burgundy, some greys, some blues. So that'll do for one of the smaller bits of colour. And I've got another one from Snuggly Stars Yarns. It's the first thing I've ordered for them. Wow, that colour looks amazing on the podcast. <laughs> that's fantastic. This is a one of a kind. It's called Fireside, um, and I, I think it's one of a kind because that it looks like it's been dyed and then over dyed with pink, because um, all of the colours look like they've been over dyed. But it looks amazing, and I think that will be really good. So this is a hundred grams. So this will be one of the bigger sections in the middle, and I think it's going to look amazing. And Snuggly Stars yarn. When I got this package, not only did it have the yarn, but I also got like as a little gift. This cute little pack of Disney princess buttons, which is so cute. How many princess buttons are there? I think there's eight or ten. Wow. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's an eight. Eight. Jasmine and and Belle. There's two, I think, of most of them. So like those. There's Jasmine and Belle and lots of others. So they're quite cute. Little flower-shaped wooden buttons. And also, I'm loving the trend currently for indie yarn dyers when they send out... Um, skeins of yarn to also include a, a lovely sachet of tea. I am fully there for that. So I'm currently drinking my tea that came with Snuggly Stars Yarn and it was mango and strawberry. Not that you can see that, mango and strawberry. And it's very, very nice. So uh, I like I know that um, uh, Down Sheepy Lane also send out a sachet of tea because I get a sachet, a sachet of tea every time I get my Sock Club yarn. Yeah. Um, I've had some other ones that also send out. So I'm liking this a lot. I'm enjoying yeah. the fact that you get tea with your wool. I'm fully up for that. Woolly tea. Mm. Tea wool. So I've also, the other one, another one that I'm going to use with it that um, I've had for a little while are these two unicorn tails, which I bought in the summer when we went to Loop in London. These are both Madeleine Tosh singles um, and they're not quite enough on their own. But if I stripe them together, they will be enough for one uh, the first bit, which is quite small. So I'm going to need at least another four different colours. So what I'm going to do, my plan is, when we go to Unravel in a couple of weeks' time, I will take all my singles that I already have for the shawl so I can look at other colours and see how they match and then try and come up with all the singles that I need for my Find Your Fate shawl, which mm -hmm. I'm really excited about knitting. But it's the first thing I've knit where I've had to have like a significant selection of yarn. Yeah. Like I've only ever knit stuff that maybe has two different yarns, yeah. not like five or seven or however yeah. many it is. Or like you've knit a jumper, but it was like ten balls of the same yarn. Yeah, exactly. Not one where I've had to go around and be like, right, I need one of these, one of these. Because yeah. if you're knitting a jumper where it's ten balls of the same yarn, you go out and you go, yes, I'll have ten balls of this yarn and yeah. then you have it all. Yeah. Whereas for this... It's going to take me a while to get all the bits of yarn together and have enough to do 
to do the, the, the shawl because I have to go and find other bits of other singles that are the right length and the sort of a complementary colour that we yeah. well together. So cool. that's cool. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. It'll be fun. Um, that's almost stash enhancement. Well, not quite. We've got a, a joint stash enhancement. Yeah, that's true. The January? It will say on the thing. Yeah. January. January 2018, instalment of the Time Travellers Club from Hilltop Tower. This is called The Boldly Go, but it's not about Star Trek. It's just about space. It is 50% uh, BFL, 25% bamboo, 12.5% uh, uh, It's literally on the front. You can baby alpaca. And, baby alpaca. And 12.5% sari slip, which I think is... A little tiny bits of colour in here, so it's mostly it's black with little bits of colours because this is to represent space. Yeah, the final frontier. There's lots of black in space, and when you look up at the stars, they look white. But as Katie explained in her explanatory letter about why she picked this colour and what it means, uh, when you actually I don't know whether it's when you actually look at clou uh, clouds, stars really close, or when you look at them through the right kind of microscopy type thing, you see the telescope. The telescope. Microscope. Yeah, microscopes are looking. You were doing really, really well then, and then you, it all just went wrong. <laughs> so NASA was like this, ready to go, and then you said microscope, and they're like, no, we, no, we don't want that. <laughs> uh, stars are actually all different colours. Like uh, as they die, they become a red giant, dwarf. red dwarf, and they, you know, that's red, and yeah. Planets of all different colours as well. I know so much about space. <laughs> so yeah, it's to represent space. space. So yeah, I thought when I saw the name of the colour, it was going to be about like Star Trek, and it's like, Star Trek is in space. Yeah, but it's so, it, it's the it's more about spectrometry, which is looking at the looking at the light in looking at the colours in light in space. I see. That is yeah. So we have 100 grams of this each, and last time we showed you the big bag of alpaca we bought, which is black, oh, yeah. and you know, 12.5% of this is black alpaca, so I'm thinking of spinning this as a three ply, one ply of this, and then two plies of alpaca, the black alpaca that we bought, and then I'll have like 300 grams-ish, almost, of black, with the occasional bit of colour. Soft, soft, soft yarn. Oh. Although it won't be very, it won't have much uh, bounce or no. stretch. It'll be quite um, inelastic. Mind you, this is only 50% wool. So even if I'd spun this by itself, it would only be half as elastic as a pure wool. And I don't know that BFL is a hugely bouncy wool because it's a, a sort of long, lustrous wool. It's not as bouncy as, say, a down wall. I've, I've looked at my book about the fleets and I, I've learned some things. Education. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But I think this is going to be a beautiful black something. And then Ooh. we're going to have a load of black yarn that we're going to be able to knit in, like, 25 minutes at midday every day <laughs> yeah, during the summer. During the summer. So and we then, don't die. Yeah. So, you know, to preserve our eyesight. Which, as you can see, is, you know, already a little challenged. We're going to have to wear glasses. Yeah, knitting black yarn during the summer, I think, is a, just a call for pain. Well, knitting black yarn during the winter when there's, like, no daylight would, I think, be... No, but knitting black yarn during the summer will be the hottest thing you've ever done. Yeah. Especially if it's, like, a big thing, like a shawl or something. Yeah. So, goodness knows what we're going to do. We're going to actually, like, I don't know, move into a fridge. Sure. With the, you know, That's it's cold like a and idea. has a, a light. <laughs> to good. This. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. so goodness only. Cool. I think that's it. I think that's it. Pretty yeah. much. Um, Unravel is in what? Three weeks? Is it? Something like that. I think so. Yeah, because in two weeks it's the week before Unravel, and we'll be recording another sense. podcast. Cool. So there'll be one more before Unravel. Yes. And then we will. I'll try and get some footage at Unravel on my phone or whatever. Oh. Um, we'll try and do a little bit. Okay. So we will have one more podcast before we go to Unravel, so that will be in two weeks' time, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Try and get it, well, will we get it up? We'll try and get it up before we go to Unravel, yeah. because we'll record at the weekend, and then we're leaving on the Wednesday. 
Wednesday? Wednesday, aren't we, to go over to Surrey. Because we're going to unravel on a Friday. So as long as we get it, as long as we get it up before the Wednesday, yeah. it'll be before unravel. Otherwise, it'll be yeah. after. If we have another, away for like if we have another week. technological issue like we had last week, mm. then yeah. well, we'll be away from the Wednesday to the Sunday. Yeah. So yeah, we'll try and get it up before then. So hopefully, you will see us once more before we go to unravel. Yeah. Um, we'll be there on the Friday at unravel, and I'm very excited. I'm going to buy yarn. It's very, you know, I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. Because you never buy yarn otherwise. No. <laughs> right. Anyway, okay. we will see you in a couple of weeks, hopefully, yeah. uh, if all goes according to plan. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Thank please you. like, please subscribe, leave a comment. Thank you for all the new subscribers and the comments that we've had since our last one went ah, yes. which is very cool. Uh, we are now 85 subscribers, which means we have to get 15 more and then we can have our own URL. <gasps> special yeah we're very excited about that so 15 more subscribers and we'll be at 100 and that will be awesome yeah. and we will have been doing it for under a year so that's not too bad yeah i don't think no considering you know we're not prolific podcast yeah or like famous in knitting circles well no i think it's because we only put something out every two or more weeks <laughs> so yeah. you know we're not, we're not particularly prolific in podcasting no. that's why um yeah okay but thank you very much for watching i'm Thanks. gonna drink my tea now and we'll see you in a couple of weeks.